So we talk a lot about the core and how important it is in spinal stabilization. And we talk about Total Gym being a really great piece of equipment that highlights that when we're doing a lot of even lower body or upper body exercises. But let's look at a program if you're rehabbing someone with a specific intention of really strengthening the spine and really building that stabilization. So squats, typically we think of just squats for lower body. But in this case, if you have the incline can be higher or lower, I want you to think about what happens with the spine if we now just start with an alternating squat. Again, you need that pelvic stability, and you can take it to where there's no actual plyometric. I might have someone start with this alternating and lift their head and just see that might be enough to bring in some of the stabilization. And what happens? Are they tenting at the abdominals? Can they keep that connection where they're in actually activating the transverse or is the multifidus activating? I might have a lot of hands-on going on here. So from here, I'm gonna have his head down and I'm gonna go into, let's say, unilateral. So sometimes I also do this and I have the person bring their knee into their chest. Some, for some of my patients, are very much anteriorly tilted and as soon as I have them start doing squats in this position and now even take it to what we do next as a plyometric, I see a lot of hyperextension. So if I bring that knee into their chest, I might be passively positioning the spine. We might do a few with one leg and then eventually you can go into an alternating plyometric. There's a sweet spot, as I mentioned before, for each person that the higher you go, it becomes definitely more of a strength focus. As I lower the incline down, that exercise definitely gets transferred into more of a stabilization. So I'm going to have Jeff here just start with some alternating jumps. It's easier for stabilization to start with an alternating jump than it is just to have someone start with a bilateral plyometric jump. The head can be up, it can be down. I might also take this exercise and start to work a little bit even more control where you have the board stay still and you start to do like a running action. And again, I'm working on either the head up or down and I'm working on that spinal stabilization. I can change how low they are in the board that they come down a little bit more and they do it. I can have them come up a little bit more. So you can start to think about, you can rest a little bit about how you can take that squat and change your intention from a typical lower body exercise to really more of a spinal stabilization. So I'm gonna have you press all the way up. I'm now just gonna have Jeff stay there and I'm gonna attach the arm cable. So maybe you have a patient that is, needs a lot more stabilization and that you feel like they need a little bit more support of their trunk. What's nice here is you can start to work the back in this manner, that I give him the arm pulley, and he can transition himself. He can have the feet on the floor. Sometimes I have people do that so that they have a little bit more support. Otherwise, he can scoot himself up the board and then transition his feet at the bottom. And he can roll all the way up to do that or he can just scoot. Placing the feet at the bottom edge of the board, he can go in just to a lat pull down you can go narrow or wide. And again, this is also a shoulder exercise as we know that posterior sling, that lat is really important to stabilization. So you're gonna see a lot of overflow in your intention in different exercises. You can go straight to a pullover. So it's typically a sequence I add with patients for sure is a pullover. Then I start to add a bridge to this, whether it's a hip lift where he's keeping neutral or I'm actually having him bridge all the way up. First, he might maintain the bridge Another, if that feels uncomfortable, might be they actually do the movement in a compound manner, lifting up and pulling down. Oftentimes I tell people to stop with their arms, so if you lift up into a bridge, I want their hands to stop about mid-thigh and or at their knees if they're bridging, and then slowly come back down. I might keep his arms by his sides and now just lift and lower the hips. So now you're just working just on the bridge in and of itself. Increasing the intensity of this exercise, he maintains bridging, but now the arms come up and now they're stabilizing and now he's lifting and lowering the hips. And then from here, the arms will pull down, the hips will lower, and he can move into shoulder adduction, out to the side and back in. How far out he goes is dependent upon his range of motion with the shoulder and what you're seeing if you're seeing any compensations happen. In this position and with really all arm movements, you can have the feet supported and then eventually what you can do is have the legs up into a tabletop position, to the sky, and then out to a diagonal, increasing the intensity of the exercise. I'm going to have you bring your arms down by your sides and then I'm going to have your elbows bend. 
So we're gonna move into a little bit of alternating triceps, and this is how I build an exercise with my patients. I do this because I want them to learn the coordination. So I teach them a tricep, and then I have their arms out straight. And then I bring their legs up, and they go into a little bit of a bi bicycle. I tell first to reach through the ceiling because it's easier. Then when they're ready, they add that component of the tricep. So the alternating arm and leg. And then to intensify this even more, you can have a longer lever and go really into shoulder flexion and extension. So you can take this exercise and really make it dyna as dynamic as you want it to be. And then you can bring both arms down to your sides and feet down onto the ground. And then you can slowly roll up to sitting.